Day two, we are live once again at the Library Bar and the Gilded Balloon in Edinburgh for the 2013 International Festival and Fringe. And incredibly, my next guest, and I do find this very hard to believe, this is your first Fringe. Ian Lavender is here. It's, it's, uh, hello. Yeah, it, it's the first time I've played at the Fringe. Uh, it's not the first time I've been. Mm. Uh, I used to... Uh, oh, I, I came up when the Fringe was the Fringe, when I was... When it was the Fringe. Well, it, it was <laughs> two bars and uh, so a very mucky Fringe as well, just dragging in the mud. And... Um, when, when, oh, mm, 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 yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, We've got to uh, name the number of a years. A long time ago, <laughs> when I was a student, indeed, when, yeah. when, you, when you could just come up as a group of students and... Yeah. and uh, Hitching on a lorry up from Bristol, you, you work out what you're going to do. We're going to talk about your show in a couple of seconds, but, but, this is but a little but, more organised. But did, now. did you ever, um, when you were a student and you were observing it and, and, and without taking part, did you ever want to take part in the fringe? Was it something that you had set your sights well, on? Really, point? honestly, I mean, 47 years ago. 47, 47 years ago, the fringe was about three pubs. And yeah, indeed. You know. yeah. So if, you, if you'd find somebody to. On the pavement and get moved along, and then say you'd done the fringe or the Edinburgh Festival. So that's the nearest I got to performing at it. Mm. I visited to see, and uh, my son's in the film industry, and so I, I used to come up with him in mm -hmm. the uh, last few years. But it's the first time, yeah, long way around to get in. It's the first time I've played the fringe, and it's wonderful. A and bit like a bucket list. And 47 years, I mean, that, that must predate Pike then. Yes, yeah. well, student, Dad's yeah. Army. Yeah, yeah. yeah. after drama school. Goodness. Yeah, okay. Yes. Well, this year you're up oh. uh, making your uh, <laughs> making your fringe debut uh, as Brooksy in the Shawshank Redemption. Yes. Now, of course, that that sentence is going to conjure up the film from for many people. This is not based on the film specifically, is it? This is based on the book. Well, it's it, 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 it's quite a journey. I mean, the, the book, the Shawshank, or Rita Hayworth in the Shawshank Redemption, is a, is only a quarter of one book. It's a novella. It's one mm. it's one season out of four seasons, and that was of course expanded into two and a half hour film much with King's um, input and, and blessings. And so characters that are only mentioned, Brooksy in the book is only mentioned in about three paragraphs. Mm -hmm. He's already gone by the time the story starts. But they expanded it because it was useful and, and a, a, a lovely character in, in the film. Now, then you bring it back to a play, so you're on your third leg of a triangle, if you like. Mm -hmm. So they're distilling both the play and the book. Mm -hmm. And Stephen King, when, when they did the play, asked uh, Dave and Owen to... Um, to pull it back to a lot of things, back to what were in the book as opposed to what had developed in the film. Right. Even down to, um, you know, does Brooksy die or not? Right. I don't quite know in the book. And they so never hear of him, he dies. <laughs> I mean, he, he disappears. That's, he's, the, that's the point. He's, he's he no fades away there, when he leaves prison. Yeah. And, and his journey then has continued in this, in this particular production. Um, what was it like bringing to life a character which had which had a, a brief existence before, if you like, then in, in, in <laughs> the film? A brief, then you know, Yeah, and, and, and then and then bringing that back to life, if you will. Uh, oh, it's in no way hard. No way hard. You can't say it's hard. Because <clears throat> if you're going to worry about how things were done before, well, well sorry, I'll go on a different track. Uh, I, I was in Sister Act for 18 months in the West End, and never. Crowds outside the theatre, oh, we're so loving, we want to hear the music, we want to hear the music, we're going to film all that Motown, oh, mm -hmm. um, oh, lordy, what they're going to think when they get in there, and it's a totally new, um, I was going to say script, what's, what's, what's the word for music? Um, libretto, score. 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 It's a difficult <laughs> word, I'll save it for later. And, um, we'll save yeah, libretto, but, 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 <laughs> but What are they going to do? Alan Menken's new score, total new score, not a song that they, and they go out and say, oh, that was great. Uh -huh. Once they get into seeing something, they tend to forget that this was nothing to do with the film, as it were. And really, in that respect, this is nothing to do with the film Shawshank Redemption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's a version of the original story, which was extraordinary. The film is extraordinary. There's no two ways about it. Uh, not just me. I mean, not, but I mean, only this morning, but the average score on the film hit list is 9.8 out of 10. That's the average score that yeah. people give it. It's certainly one of my favourite films. Um, and again, we've had, I've had people saying, oh, I'm coming to see that. That was, that was the greatest film. Well, it was a book as well. Was it? Oh, was it a book? Yes, it was a book mm. as well. And, well, it's the greatest film I've ever seen in my life. And go out saying, that was fabulous. That was fabulous. Well, it wasn't like the film, was it? No, but it's the story. Oh, at last, they've come round. I'm not being belittling the, the, yeah. that. Yes, they say they're going to see, come and see it because of the film, but it is, in fact, this extraordinary story of, yeah. of, of hope, two sorts of hope that clash and people without hope and how it actually does survive. And they don't mind whether it's the film, the book or this play. We'll get into uh, Brooksy's new elongated story in just a few minutes' time with you, Ian, if we can. Yes. 
So we're with Ian Lavender making his uh, fringe debut as Brooksy in the Shawshank Redemption. It's in the Assembly Rooms uh, until the 25th of August. This is based on the Stephen King novel, as we said a few minutes ago, Ian. Um, a, a lot of Stephen King novels haven't made the transition, certainly, to the cinema particularly successfully. But I think it's fair to say this is a, an exception to that, uh, to that rule. Yeah, um... What was it? Was it one of those, just one of those things that there, there was an extraordinary little, that's not condescending, an extraordinary short book mm -hmm. that captured a, a few people's imagination. It didn't reach the public that it deserved to reach because it was part of a four, um, not in the style of King or any people looking for real horror stories and these weren't horror stories. Uh, so okay, it was on the sidelines a bit and somebody got hold of it, whether it was Tim or whoever it was and then got this extraordinary cast together and the, the, the sheer chemistry of Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman in the movie um, who were, you know, in the, in the book the Morgan Freeman character is an Irishman mm. so I mean, let's go, let's go in different directions it's what, it's what people bring and what they find and how they develop this, this theme of hope into which isn't a common thing in Stephen King novels. No, really. it isn't, it isn't. Tell me more about Brooksy then in, in, in this production. As we said, there was a, a very small role in the, the, in the history of this, of this piece, if you like, for, for Brooksy up till now, but now he's at the centre of things. He's, yes, sort of, um, yes, for not all of it. And also, me being an older gentleman, I'm, I'm glad of the last 20 minutes rest. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but whether he's dead or not is another matter. Um, no, he's... Uh, I say in the book, he's, he's not dismissed, he's only d dealt with um, in three paragraphs. Yeah. He's already gone when this narration starts, and it's what Andy continues of, of, of Brooks's books and his idea about a library, and he develops this thing, which would have been wonderful for Brooks to see. Well, in the film and in the play, uh, Brooks is away, he's part of it all the way through, he's still there. Um, in the film, he goes out, and he's been totally um, institutionalised. Mm. Uh, and he knows as the time approaches, he has no hope when he gets out. He's finished. There's nothing. He, he doesn't. He's not going to even know how to cross the road. Mm. And so there's a, a loving and a lovable, irascible. Mind you, he did kill his, his wife and his daughter. But, <laughs> um, but he's probably the one person who shouldn't be in there. Mm -hmm. Apart from Andy, who didn't commit a crime, but other people who didn't. didn't All of those who were guilty. Uh, yeah, he, yes. he, uh, he really shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. He's a crime of passion, whatever. And um, and he, um, he's the one who doesn't survive. His hope doesn't work. And it's really the strength that other people get in finding out how their hope can and how it will survive. And the two different people, and eventually, the two hopes meet in the in the future. It's. Um, that sounds all a bit sort of philosophical, but roughly that's what it is. He doesn't survive, is all, um, and possibly you should have done. We're here on the on the, on the 6th of August, so you've had, what, four or five performances of, four, of, yeah, four four of this so yeah. far. How, how's it been going so far? How have the audience have re responded to that, as we talked about? Uh, it's been extraordinary. Um, we, we felt so unready because um, technical things, the assembly rooms, the refurbishment, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a big piece going in there, and it's a big, big piece physically as well, and possibly, I don't know, but we lost a day, day and a half, mm -hmm. technically, lighting, whatever, didn't quite... And so we didn't feel ready to open us on stage, because we're frightened anyway, because we don't make fools of ourselves. That's the worst thing that can happen to an actor, like walking up there and walking... We didn't want to be silly and look silly. I guess you don't want to be too relaxed either at the start of a run, well, do you? You need you a bit want, of tension, but you don't want to fall flat on you. <laughs> exactly. You know. and, uh, <laughs> so um, we were, well, not blown away, but wow. Wow. Uh, a, we got through it, and B, it worked. They loved it, and I am happy to say that one, two, three, four has got better, better, better. It's got tighter, yeah. you know, as well. Yeah. Much, um, a, a much, much more solid thing. No gaps, nothing. And last night, well, we came off going, "Wow, oh, that's what we're here for." Mm -hmm. And the reaction has been quite extraordinary. And yeah, I, I think having spoken to quite a few performers, you know, to, to get to the stage within about three or four days where you go, that's it, this is what we came to do, and it's now all working the way that we yeah. wanted to. That's quite impressive, actually. A lot of performers sometimes take a bit longer than it's that. It's a to, great group of guys, that it really is. Even if the, it's, uh, heaven for fen, but even if the thing hadn't worked, this uh, ten totally disparate guys, mm. five comics, five actors, one an American actor, doesn't know uh, we don't know his, how he works really mm. and that sort of thing. And from day one, these ten people have got on like house on fire, mm. and seeing seeing comics try, not trying seeing comics 
working in a, in, in a milieu that's not theirs and, and us having to work with them in a way that isn't always our way either. It's been absolutely lovely and uh, I shall miss the group of guys as much as the play, if not more, when, when it's over. We're with Ian Lavender making his fringe debut at the Assembly Rooms this year in the Shawshank Redemption. Ian, I just before you go, I just quickly want to touch on the whole Dad's Army thing because oh, we can't yeah. we can't let oh, the, go on. the conversation go past without us. <laughs> you could, you could making that reference. But you you were you were Pike, of course, in in Dad's Army. Yeah. And I, I think I think I'm right in saying that uh, was the line "Don't tell him Pike not voted as the most memorable or the most funny of any sitcom ever it's, in the last few years." I, I don't know. If, it was certainly in the, in the, in the funniest, I voted in the funniest moments. Yes. Whether, I don't know specifically a line, because the two funny other two, which are, I think, wonderful, are from um, um, Only Fools and Horses, the chandelier dropping, <laughs> and, yes. and David going through the open bar, which are no lines in at all. <laughs> um, but yes, happily up in those three, certainly. And would, well, you rather have, would you rather have spoken the line than been the subject of it? Uh, no, I don't want that responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> it was an episode that we knew. We knew you. We, we knew we got a special episode, and when they told us that Philip was playing the German, wow, goody! That special episode with a, a special actor, and it was one of those yeah. things where I, wouldn't say, I don't mean we were blasé, but you get somebody who comes in and just tweaks everybody up a level. Yes. Philip did that, and we knew this was a funny. But didn't? Yes, we knew that was a funny line too, but we yeah. did not see the reaction coming on that, that enormous reaction. Yeah. Um, and I say, we knew it was funny, and I pleaded with David to please don't come to a reaction. I, I can't keep my face straight. I'm laughing at the top of that ladder. <laughs> I, make, I find it funny. So I can't go anywhere else, Ian, I've got to come to you. Oh, all right, this I know. You are. And I just hoped. And we had a wonderful vision mixer. She was absolutely wonderful. And she holds on me as long as she can. And she just does cut away from me when you see me bite the inside of my lip. <laughs> <laughs> and the cheek sort of hollowed in between my teeth. And I came down, because I still, after a week of rehearsing it, mm. couldn't keep my face straight with Arthur and, and Philip down the bottom of the ladder. And uh, came down the bottom of the ladder, asked for the makeup girl to come over with, can I have a, can I have a tissue please? And spat out the blood. <laughs> it was the only way I could stop myself from laughing at the top. Um, but didn't know it was going to be along with, well, they didn't do those sort of things in those days, but up there with that chandelier dropping and yeah. going through the... So you had no sense that, I mean, what, 35, 40 years later, it would still be a moment that was being spoken about and, and <laughs> reminisced about on a, on a very comfortable sofa in Edinburgh in 2013? I'm having people shouted across your bars, yes. yes. Does that happen? <laughs> Occasionally, yes. yes. Don't tell him that. <laughs> if they get the line right, most people, an awful lot of people say, don't tell him your name, Pike, and I can turn around and say, get the line right. <sighs> it is, of course, don't tell him, Pike, because you know, it's, it's, it's a sculpted line, it has been. Got it right. Those those words have weight, don't they? Yeah, They're, they've all been weighed. And, you and did measured. it very well. Do it again. Don't tell him, Pike. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, no, not quite as good as <laughs> No, I don't think that's going to last 40 <laughs> years somehow, is it? Ian, a pleasure to speak to you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much for joining indeed. us. The Thank Shawshank you. Redemption is on at the Assembly Rooms until the 25th of August. Thank you. Thank you.